So good afternoon, colleagues. Once again, we have met to discuss issues leading to our professional development as professional teachers. And uh, once again, I welcome you to the professional development webinar series three that promotes uh, preparing for promotion. In this webinar, as the objective has been, we want to help teachers familiarize themselves with the national teaching standards, uh, continuous professional development, and what have you. But today, we are going to look at just an introduction to the national teachers' standards uh, guidelines for teachers. Let me announce that uh, the presenter, the main presenter for today, uh, also has had an emergency, and so he will join us either today or in the next week. You join us to do the continue with the, uh, the national teaching standards. So I will be holding the the button for now in this presentation. And thank you for joining us today. So our topic is introduction to national teachers standards for Ghana, and then we're looking at the, the guidelines. So introduction to national teachers standards for Ghana, the guidelines, and I will be your facilitator. Now, the specific objective for this is to discuss the concept, the philosophy behind the National Teacher Standards Guideline. Why was it created? What is it? And what is involved in it? We need to know. And even why must we know? So the question that we'll be asking are, what are the standards for? But before we go into what the standards are for, we should look at, when we say a standard, we are setting standard, what is it? Basically, a standard has to do with a set of principles or guidelines that, you know, that, particular, that is particularly followed to achieve a purpose or a unit of measurement in terms of, okay, this is, the criteria that we're going to use to measure this activity or this activity. For example, if you say, oh, somebody can run faster than somebody, what are you using to measure? So what you are going to use to measure is the standard, maybe how fast you got here or whatever. So the standard becomes a unit or the criteria for something. So in Ghana, if you say this is the best teacher, what standard are you using to measure that this is the best teacher? Are you going to base it on political affiliation or your love for the person or, your, or based on your personal relationship with the person or what? You know, so standards are made to, to measure something and they are based on criteria. They are sort of criteria. That is, that's the basic idea. So what are the standards for? Now that Ghana has a national teacher's standards, what are the standards for? Now the standards was made, or is made to set out the minimum levels of practice that all trained teachers must reach at the end of their pre-service teacher education course in order to play such a critical role as teacher, you know, educators or as teachers. We were trained in, you know, in different institutions in Ghana here or outside. Now these institutions, you know, have standards, but here we are discussing uh, the situation of Ghana, you know. So once we have the standards, you know, it's going to be the minimum level of practice. And that is what you are going to measure it against. So if you're going to measure your professional practice, you're going to look at these standards. So that is why the standards are made. Set out the minimum level of practice that all trained teachers must reach at the end of their training. Should somebody go through their training, whether university or college of education or in other institutions that train human resource, you know, the standards, these are the standards. The standards also inform teacher development while in, in their first year as beginning teachers on their induction course in schools prior to licensing as professional teachers by the National Teaching Council. 
and provide a framework for future professional and career development for all teachers. So this is part of why the standard was developed. And per the 2008 Act of Ghana, you know, it established the National Teachers Stand or the National Teaching Council. The National Teaching Council becomes a regulator of all teachers and based on to the development of the teaching standards. Besides, the standards should be seen as one common set of standards that apply in all, or it applies to all teachers at all levels. The exemplar that accompany the standards at the end of these guidelines, these specific examples of the standard in action and at the kindergarten, primary, junior high school, and senior high school's level to give further support for those using them. Now, the indicators provide evidence of attainment of the standard. So the standard contain examples. Examples, you know, deals with specific things that need to be achieved based on uh, variables that have been set, what things need to be achieved as a professional teacher, right? And the standards also helps, they were made so that to help student teachers on pre-service courses who are working towards meeting their, you know, I mean, and finishing their school to be able to, you know, be properly trained. So student teachers on pre-service teacher, uh, student teachers on pre-service teacher training courses, working towards meeting the standards by the end of their course, you know. So that is who it is made for. Here we are looking at who is the standard made for. Remember, we have indicated that the standard is made for all teachers. But now we are going to specify the category of teachers the standard is made for. So the question is, who are the standards for? The standards are for uh, student teachers. I mean, uh, teachers who are on the field, students who are in the college of education in the universities being trained. So student teachers on pre-service teacher training courses working towards meeting the standards by the end of their course. It's also for all beginning teachers in their induction year in schools. Besides all practicing teachers in the field. I believe most of us here on this platform are practicing teachers. We are active service when we're practicing. So it's for all practicing teachers in schools who are covered by the 2016 new teaching council framework for career progression and promotion. The standards serve as a point of reference for all standards and competencies. So as a, as a professional teacher in Ghana, this is going to be the point of reference for your professional conduct. In addition, the National Teaching Council will use the teacher, will use the teacher standard in assessing cases of any misconduct by any member of the teaching profession. In this case, it implies that the teaching standard contain some codes of ethics that teachers must follow. It still marks some of the codes of uh, the teaching profession as a professional code that you are supposed to follow. And so that is what the National Teaching Council will use in assessing cases. I remember, you are licensed under the 2008 Act, which is, an, uh, which is a legal act, right? And uh, using these standards, when there's a misconduct, that's what they are going to use to you know, get things ironed out. All those institutions, it's also for all institution training and development of teachers, including universities and college of education, both public and private, vocational, technical, and academic. So that is the part of the category of teachers for which these standards apply. Teacher educators, those in universities, college of education, who are the teachers or instructors or facilitators, also need this standard because it will guide them in the preparation of curricula and courses for teacher training. So we all need it. University teachers need it. Teachers in senior high school need it. 
and what have you. So that's it. Now, district education directors, the circuit supervisors, teacher unions, head teachers, and mentors in school also will need it because that is going to be the yesterday, you know, based on which everything is going to be as a professional conduct, teachers will be measured by that. So that is what it does for us. Please, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, clearly. Okay. Yes, sir. We can hear okay. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We can hear you. Okay, so let's go on. <clears throat> so where, so I mean, how, how were the standard developed? The standard that we are talking about, how were they developed? Did somebody sit in one corner somewhere to develop something and say, I'm putting it, teachers use it. So how was it developed? Now it went through a process, a rigorous one, involving serious academics, right? Who developed this? So the NTS, the National Teaching Standards, that is the NTS, is a rule from the needed or from the need to consolidate the different standards being used in institutions often initial teacher training and those who provide continuing professional development into a national standard to ensure that the development of the student teachers is guided by the same set of standards. So, you know, they developed that for that purpose. And in the process of the development, you know, a whole lot of issues you know, occurred. In terms of issues I'm talking about, they looked at available documents. They consulted a lot of sources and they look at assessment tools used by University of Cape Coast, University of Education, whenever, right? The assessment tool they use for assessing student teachers during on campus teaching and then uh, internship or if like the practicum. What are these tools using to assess? So they look, they studied all this. And then they also looked at handbook for principal teacher aspirants by the Ghana Education Service. They looked at that. They also looked at manual for teachers on school attachment. In fact, the schools have a manual for attachment and they, they also looked at that one to develop the teaching standards. There, there are also handbooks on mentorship and student teacher competence matrix. So they looked at that and consulted, they did a survey of national teaching standards in eight countries. So they didn't look at only the case of Ghana, they look at other countries in terms of professional standards, what is happening there before it was developed. They look at professional standards, what was available before the, it was developed. And in developing, there was huge involvement of practitioners across all the sectors and other key stakeholders, including the National Teaching Council itself, the National Council for Tertiary Education, the National Accreditation Board, NAB, Ghana Education Service, the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, NACA, National Inspectorate Board, principals of colleges of education, teacher unions, and teacher universities. You, you know, in terms of teacher universities, we're talking about UCC and UUW. All these huge institutions and academicians were consulted in the development of the standards. And uh, now the question that we ask ourselves is, what is the legal status of the national teacher standard? In fact, in our last webinar, somebody asked, so the document that we discussed, does it have a, a framework, a legal framework or legal backing? Interestingly, this has, it was developed, you know, and then it got a legal backing. So the 2008 Education Act established the National Teaching Council. And uh, it is the responsibility or they are responsible for establishing the framework 
the Educational Act established the framework around teachers' employment, what we call CPD, that is continuous professional development and periodic review of professional practice and ethical standards. So in this case, the national teaching standard has overall responsibility to license teachers by law. And that is why they have begun the you know, piloting of, uh, uh, in terms of licensing teachers across board. And all teachers will be licensed. And uh, if there's any misbehavior or professional misconduct, your license will be taken away from you. So these standards define the minimum level of practice expected of student teachers and teachers in order to be licensed. And it must be noted that during the training and the period of induction, the standards continue to define the level of practice at which all qualified teachers are expected to perform. So in a nutshell, the 2008 Education Act makes the national teaching standard you know, mandatory. Because if you look at the uh, National Teaching Council, that the education service, you know, I mean, that the Education Act established. It's, it's made that council a, a, you know, a regulator of teachers. And so whatever they come out with, that is good for the nation in terms of teacher licensing, it will help us and that is it. In this case, let's look at the philosophy that underpins the standard. What philosophy underpins the creation or the available standard, I mean, the standard that has been created? In fact, teaching standards, you know, development across have been found to be, you know, something great because it regulates what teachers do on the field. But in, in creating the teaching standard, they found a missing link in the process that these people have their standards, these people also have their different standards, and you know, this school will have the standard, whatever. So we didn't have a unified standard that we were looking forward to. So in, in creating this, the kind of unified, I mean, other standards to, to, to make it you know, universal for the case of Ghana. And the standards are therefore designed to codify what good teachers look like for Ghana, recognizing the urgent need to improve the quality of the school experience and learning outcome for all learners to raise the status of teachers in their communities and country. Now, what are the teacher standards or, or how are they organized? How is it organized? Now, the teacher standards is organized in three major domains or three major pillars. The first one is the professional values and attitude. Professional values and attitude. And the second one is professional knowledge. And then professional practice, the third. So it is anchored three major pillars. Looking After looking at all other documents, they realize that in fact, the major pillars are going to be professional values and attitudes, professional knowledge, and professional practice. Now, let's go into each and see what it involves. Under professional values and attitudes, there's one thing we call professional development. Professional development. And under professional development, Teachers are expected to critically and collectively reflect to improve teaching and learning. So as teachers, they need to okay. critically, you know, and collectively reflect on their practices to improve teaching and learning. Right? And teachers are also expected to improve personal and professional development through lifelong learning and continuous professional development. That's it. Under still professional development, that is under the bigger heading professional values, 
You know, teachers are supposed to demonstrate effective growing leadership qualities in the classroom and the wider community or the wider school. Remember, in the professional practice, we have the professional development and then a community of practice. And the community of practice, what are you supposed to do as a teacher? Or what is expected of you as a teacher? No teacher. A teacher is supposed to be guided by the legal and ethical teacher codes of conduct in his or her development as a professional teacher. And uh, must engage positively with colleagues, learners, parents, the school management committees, parent teacher associations, the SMC, and the wider public as part of the community of practice. And so as teachers, you need to engage with the community. You don't stay in the community and remain aligned or, or remain unfriendly to the in, the in the community. You know, so you're going to interrelate. So this is what's expected of you. Teachers are also you know, expected to develop positive teacher identity, positive teacher identity, and act as good role models for students. They must also, uh, teachers must see his or her role as a potential agent of change in the school, community, and the country. We now come into professional knowledge. Professional knowledge. And the professional knowledge, the major thing they look at is knowledge of educational framework and curriculum. It means that as a teacher, you need knowledge of the existing curriculum framework, as well as the curriculum. So we need to be acquainted with the curriculum and then the framework that is you know, established or created based on which you know, the curriculum was created. And so under this key component, that is under the major heading professional knowledge, teachers need to or must demonstrate or teachers demonstrate familiarity with education system and key policies guiding it. So as teachers, this standard we need to be familiar with and other important standards that guide the, 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 the teaching profession. You also need to have comprehensive knowledge of the official school curriculum, including learning outcomes. You need to get secure content knowledge, secure content knowledge but the subject matter, right? And then the pedagogical knowledge and pedagogical content knowledge for the school and grade, and grade in, in which you teach, right? So look at these key things. You need the content knowledge, secure content knowledge. You need pedagogical knowledge and pedagogical content knowledge, PCK, for the school and the grade you, know, you teach in as a teacher. We continue with professional practice. And apart from knowledge of, uh, still under knowledge of educational framework and curriculum, the teacher also need to get what we call pre-primary and tertiary, uh, pre-primary and primary schools. And in terms of pre-primary and primary schools, the teacher must you know, exhibit or show the curriculum for the, for the years appropriate to the multi-grade. And the teacher should also have good knowledge of how to teach beginning reading and numeracy and speaking, listening, reading, and writing, and to use at least one Ghanaian language as a medium of instruction. So it makes the, that uh, language policy very important. Knowledge of students. And the knowledge of students you know, teacher must demonstrate or you must understand how children develop and learn diverse contexts and applies this in his or her teaching. Takes, the teacher takes account of and respect learners' cultural, linguistic, socioeconomic, and educational background in planning and teaching. So before you plan your teaching and learning or activities, you know the characteristics of your child. We always say, you know, individual differences. So you need to respect these individual differences in terms of the economics, in terms of, I mean, where they're coming from, 
and in terms of linguistic background, because they all don't understand, you know, or don't speak the same language. And so you need to, you know, know how you're going to prepare so that you are left uh, in your uh, in your lesson delivery. It is going to be smooth, effective, and go down well with the student. So you need to demonstrate knowledge of the student or the learners you teach. We now move to professional practice. Professional practice. Now, managing the learning and under, under that, we look at how you manage the learning environment. And under that, teachers plan, deliver, varied and challenging lessons, showing a clear grasp of the intended outcomes of their teaching. Carry out small scale action research. Let me repeat that. You need to carry out small scale action research to improve your practice. So in your daily practice, you need to be conversant with your students. You can pick a particular student and do action research, collect data, see how the child is improving based on a particular problem you have identified. And that is an expectation of you as a teacher. Carry out small scale action research to improve your practice. Then create a safe, encouraging learning environment. We need to stop insulting our students, no matter whatever. You need to just look at your method you are using and then make sure that they understand. If they, they are not understanding, it is coming from you. You need to look at your methodology. And teacher manages behavior and learning with small and large classes. And a professional practice, another key thing is teaching and learning. And under teaching and learning, the teacher employs a variety of instructional strategies that encourages student participation and critical thinking. Critical thinking is very you know, key. And so you need to vary your instructional strategies for, for which all learners or the learners in your class will find space and grab the content you, you, you are delivering. Teacher pays attention to all learners, especially girls and students with special education needs, ensuring their progress. If a particular student is not seeing well, you can move the student to the front and a whole lot of issues. If he has a special you know, case in terms of uh, mobilities, you, know, you, you can help that, that student position her in a class where you'll be able to see all this or be comfortable so that you'll be able to assimilate whatever you give to him or her. Teacher also employs instructional strategies appropriate for mixed ability, multilingual, and multi-age classes. Now, if you look at our school system, somebody may be 12 years is that class one. Some of them may be 15 years is that class one, right? And so you need to look at all this, don't say, or you grown up like this, you're in class one and you don't know anything, no. Let's stop uh, embarrassing them. So these are some of the conduct we need to do to avoid embarrassing them. The teacher also sets meaningful tasks that encourages learner collaboration and leads to purposeful learning. So you need to engage them in group work so that they will collaborate to create things. And I think it's very helpful. The teacher also explains concept clearly using example familiar to the student. So before you go to class to deliver, understand the concept you want to teach, put it in the context or in terms of the environment, in terms of the thoughts of the child and make it simpler or simple for the student to grasp in terms of your delivery. So, as a teacher, you make complex things simpler. That's what it means. Teacher also produces and use, uses variety of teaching and learning resources, including ICT, information communication technologies, to enhance learning. So you don't say, oh, me, I am born before computer. I am BBC person, that's what we say. And so, no, you need to learn it. In a case where you don't have the skill, you can involve a you know, resource person in there to enhance your teaching and learning. Another thing under professional practice that is also key is assessment. And in our 
webinar that we've been doing, we have touched on assessment as a key. <laughs> now, under that, a teacher integrate variety of assessment modes into teaching to support the learning. Our assessment should not necessarily be only writing, writing, examination, go and write this, what is this, what is that? The practical ones, things that will you know, in order them to create. Teacher also listens to learners and gives constructive feedback. In fact, in assessments, if you give an assessment and you don't give the student feedback, you better don't give it at all. So once you give an assessment, be ready to give the feedback. So this is the aspect that we're going to look at. Please, there's a noise at the back. Uh, I think I have to mute the person. Okay, so we continue. We mentioned that the teacher integrates variety of assessment modes into teaching to support learning. Can you listen to students and give constructive feedback in terms of you know, assessment process? The teacher identifies and remediate learners' difficulties in miscon or misconceptions, right? The difficulties they have or the misconceptions they have about things, referring learners whose needs lie outside the competencies or the competency of the teacher. Yes. So that is it. That's refer. You refer them to something where they can learn further. The teacher also keeps meaningful records. I said meaningful records, not records of the wrongdoings of the child. Meaningful records of every learner and communicates progress clearly to parents and the learners. The teacher also demonstrates awareness of national and school learning outcomes of learners. I take that again. The teacher demonstrates awareness of national and school learning outcomes of the learners, and then uses objective criterion referencing to assess learners. Objective criterion referencing to assess learners. OK, so on this note, thank you so much for your audience. But after the, I have finished with this presentation, now is the time for the discussion. Very important component, right? And so I'm sure you have made your questions ready and your contributions ready. And this is the first phase of the National Teaching Standards. In our next webinar, we are going to look at exactly what to be done under each. This one, as I said, is just an introduction to the National Teaching Standards. So thank you once again. And uh, we are inviting your questions. You can type it. Inviting your questions, please. So you can unmute yourself and then you ask your question. Hello. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Hello, madam, I can hear you, please. Okay, thank you, sir. Please, my first time of joining. Please, can I, can we have a the slides or whatever, or the notes, so that uh, we can uh, download and uh, revise. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. In fact, whatever we're doing right now is recorded. And so we'll put it on our YouTube, so we'll send a link. 
But you can send me your email or your phone number. You can send me your phone number. I'll just send the link to you so that you watch on WhatsApp or YouTube. Okay. Okay. Thank the other you. Ones we have done uh, on our YouTube channel, which you can look at. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please, any other, any question for, for us based on what we have discussed regarding the teaching standards? Your questions are very key because discussing this is, is very helpful for us to move ahead. Uh, hello, Doc. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, John, I'm listening John. to you. Um, so John. Yeah, one I'm listening. of the... Yes, sir. Uh, one of the key things I, I realized was that those that the standards are for. And I see the district directors of education, uh, circuit supervisors, and, and head teachers, and teacher unions, and other groups. I recently had a discussion with circuit supervisors, a certain circuit supervisor, and I asked him how often he goes through training workshops for what he does. And sincerely, he, he intimated, intimated to me that um, it's uh, of attending workshops on supervision and other things to enhance his work has, has been a talk shop. I mean, they just talk about it, but hardly would they attend workshops to be trained on supervision and ensuring standards. So if the circuit supervisor who is supposed to ensure standards by the teachers is complaining like this, the teachers, we are swimming in the ocean. <laughs> so what what should be, I mean, the, the 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 teachers, what should we do? Because if the circuit supervisor himself is not having any training, that means we are all left in the ocean, the middle of the ocean to 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 be to be drawn. Thank you. Okay. That's my 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 concern. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is a. But it depends on where the circuit supervisor is. This is a teaching standard that is covered by. The Education Act and uh, for implementation, as I speak, National Teaching Council, they are licensing teachers. They are making sure that teachers are licensed. And so, again, a point mm. in time, if you, if you don't get licensed, you may be taken yeah. off the payroll since you are not a professional teacher or something of that sort. And uh, the teaching standard indicates specifically, I mean, three major areas where or uh, circuit supervisors, educational directors teachers, you and I, all, we all have a role to play. First of all, our job as a, a professional development association, right, is to, you know, point center, what you like, you know, help members to come to terms or understand these standards so they know how it applies to them. Education directors also have their role to play. Each and every one, the major institution, you no, know, they all have their role, right? And so uh, I am sure in no time or soon they will keep up and then those schools that are or those second services officers who are not getting training, they will get with your support and myself. We'll work together. <laughs> Hello, Doug. Yeah, Olele, I'm listening. Hello. Yeah, this is your humble servant, Olele. Uh, thank you very much for your submission. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, the one who just spoke, whatever that you are speaking about the grounds is really true. And I know those who are at the top level have seen it. That's why they are bringing something called professional development. If you can't remember, just recently, even the, the, the teachers at the basic level had some allowances. That's both the SS and the basic level had some allowances, which they named the allowance as professional development. But some part of that allowance was deducted to keep for NCT to uh, uh, organize professional development for teachers, in which they are uh, rely on some organizations or institutions like uh, University of Education and the Colleges of Education, so that they will organize this professional development for them. So what I would like to say here is that we are in the pipeline coming. So gradually, gradually, Ghana, we will get there. Thank you once again for your beautiful presentation. And thank you for your input. Yes, we we will taking more uh, submissions, suggestions, opinions. 
Hassan, so do you have something to share with us? First time you have joined us on, 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 in this seminar. We have, we have. <laughs> Not really. Uh, later on, I'll talk. Okay. Uh, hey, Rick, you are welcome. Uh, no, can I come in again? No, you can come in. Isa, please, you can come in. Hello? Isa, yeah. you can come in, please. Uh, please, you, you, you send knowledge on professional values and uh, professional practices. I quite remember you made mention of professional values being the reflection part of whatever that you have taught, so that you, you reflect. If I, I got it right, and you talk about professional practice being an action, a, a case study, or an action research. No, I said- I was a little bit confused about the reflection aspect. Uh -huh. In terms of the professional, I mean, in terms I'm listening. of reflection. That a teacher or human as we have, you should be a reflective being, mm. right? You should reflect. So you reflect on the okay. activities okay. you did in the class, your teaching. Okay. You look at what you know you did, how you organize it, okay. what questions were coming. Did the student get it when you evaluated the lesson, whether formal or informal? How was it? So you reflect on it. And based on what you the results you get from your evaluation. You go back. If there's need to take the thing again, you have to you know, devise new ways of teaching or new methods or approaches to your teaching so that the student will get it. So you have to reflect. And no matter the level in which okay. you are teaching, whether okay. university, college of education, or what have you, as a teacher, you need to reflect on the activities that you do. And it is going to build your you professionally okay. in terms of knowledge. And then in terms of research, Many okay. of us, I mean, the teachers, especially those in the senior high schools and basic schools, when you ask them to maybe conduct or do research, you say, ah, for us GES, there's no use research for anything. But research is so key. In fact, there's a chunk of, you know, problems, research problems in, the, in your class. It can be with one student or two or a couple of them, you identify the problem and then using action research. But action research is applicable to, or it's mostly, you know, used by educational institutions to solve learning problems or school-related challenges. So that is why the standard says you need to, you know, involve in small-scale research. And then you come up with the results. And that result is going to help, you know, things. And that is why, you know, but this standard is a very good thing that we need to uphold because it mentioned the key things that you are not you are supposed to do as a professional. Okay. Thank you very much. But to add to it, I'm listening, sir. I'm listening. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful presentation, and uh, 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 some of us have. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Joe, Joe yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, yes, I sir, Prof. I salute you. I take and I, I, and I'm very happy you have joined us. I want you to share your yes. experiences. I want you to share your experiences on the study that you did involving the use, involving the use of these professional standards. What did you find in the study that you conducted? Share with us in, in few minutes. Thank you very much, Pro. Doc, the, to be honest with you, uh, the, the teaching standard for Ghana is very important and the key thing that every practicing teacher is supposed to have access to it. So uh, it's our Bible. We, had and it, we had a workshop and it, it, was, it, it, it was unfortunate that the teachers who were involved were not even have knowledge of that, this standard. It, it, it stipulates what you, even the teacher, is supposed to do, everything that the student is supposed to do after school, in school, and every, everything is there. And it makes your teaching simple. It makes your personal development even simple, right? The only problem I have is, now we you know our teaching in the secondary schools and in the colleges are examination centered. You teach and want the student to pass your examination. So some of the things, if you decide that you are going to apply them all, sometimes you may not even be able to finish your syllabus. 
But what I realized in that, that is what I use for my study. And it is very, 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 very good that I'm happy Dr. Swenny is talking about it. We can, we can even do a lot of research. We can even write a lot of articles based on that uh, standard. It, it is very good. So if you have not read it, if you have not read it, I advise that you take your time, go through it. Uh, it helps. It, it is very good. It's very, 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 very good. Very good. Thank you, Doc. Okay, thank you for your input and sharing what you got from your study. But I want you to give a specific example in, in, in terms of what you found in your study. You use the standard to measure the performance of some teachers in the field. Will you share with us just an example what you found? Yes. In my study, it was realized, or I found out that, you see, the teachers were supposed to do reflective teaching. As you mentioned, the students, uh, the teachers were supposed to monitor the student progress, even at home. <laughs> but it was unfortunate, it was unfortunate at a school. I went there and I asked the teacher, how do you do? And uh, uh, again, the teachers have been supposed to share their, their, their teaching with their, with their teachers, their co-teachers, so that they can prepare well. I went to school and asked them, do you, have, do, you do reflective teaching? He said, no, what do you mean by that? I have not heard anything about it. And at a class, I asked, the teacher was every board to tell me that, and I, I, uh, this is what we came to meet. They were doing some practical work. And instead of the teacher to maybe use um, the classroom, maybe divide them and might he said, no, this is what we came to meet. And the students are supposed to memorize what we are uh, 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 teaching into practicals. And I was surprised. But when you read the, the teaching standard, it's, 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 it's stipulated or it showed you what you are supposed to do, what you are, the, the students are supposed to do and in fact, if you are if you are to follow the, the teaching standard, it's 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 really good. And at least some of us have been able to write even something out of that, and we are still working on a lot of them from that book. We can take advantage of that book and cooperate and do a lot of work out of that. Thank you for your submission on that. Yes. And so it means in teaching Over. education. Hello. Hello. Yes, Mal, I'm listening to you. Yeah. No. Smala, I'm listening. Smala is talking to somebody else. Smala, oh, please, we are okay. talking to somebody else. Sorry about that. So it means that those of us in teacher uh, training institutions, I mean, colleges of education and universities, we need to teach the standards, right? We need to teach them the standard. It should be part of our teaching, I mean, the curriculum that we are teaching. One of the exactly. program, I mean, one of the courses, we should teach them the standards, what they are supposed to, because this is going to be the yastic we are going to use to measure them. And so we shouldn't hide it from them. After all, we are interested in training the professional teachers. So let them, you know, we need to, those of you who teach P and P, I think we are supposed to look at that, right? We teach that standard. Allow the student, let them go online and download it. Yeah. Our presenter yeah. is going to touch the yeah. practicalities. Yeah. Give uh, us uh, the no, practical easy, example. Easy. Um, 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 um. Hello? Hello? Yeah, as I, as I was saying, next week. Hello? Yeah, Isa. Isa, please position yourself well. I'm not hearing you. Look. Please position yourself well, Isa. I'm not hearing you. Isa is unfortunate. Hey, can can you hear me now? No, if you can position yourself well. In the meantime, Brain, you are welcome. Well, I mean, your question. You can ask your question. Brain, please unmute yourself and talk. Unmute yourself. You're talking that we're not hearing you. Hello. Hi, we can hear you now. All right. So what I was asking is, the mentoring universities prepare a blueprint for teachers in the colleges.
to follow. You take the courses that are mounted each and every semester, and then they write there, they have followed the teaching standards in preparing the course outline for you to just follow rigorously. There is no room for you, the individual, to add what you have in the course manual. Even if the material or information you have will go a long way to augment what they have prepared, it is a no-no. Take what they have given you, teach it, and then they will tell you how and where. Like Swansea said, the focus in this country has been examination, examination. On one policy, you see that, okay, we are moving from objective-based to standard-based. Agreed. You have already moved, and then yet the practicality is not there. So I think for those of you who are in the forefront at the universities who matter, who knows in the colleges, you have a lot of work to do by giving us the room to participate in preparing these materials. That's what I want to ask or okay. suggest. Thank you Thank for you. Uh, input. But let me add that in terms of teaching a course, you know, in, in, let me, let's look at UW here. You are giving courses to teach, right? Based on your level of training, where you were trained or your, I mean, in art, we have a lot of areas. I'm in textiles and fashion. So they'll give me courses related to textiles and fashion. And in that course, you know, there are a list of materials, I mean, a list of references. I can, you can update it. You can update the reference. For example, if a book is written in 2020 and you think the book will be good to students, I am not sure the university will stop you from adding that important reference. The university will never stop you from, no, no, no. You are even advised to, you know, have what we call currency in terms of the references, the new materials you have. So <laughs> I think you have to look at it again. You are, you are taking it from a different dimension. We add materials, you know, we add things about the topic. You are teaching a topic. For example, you are teaching uh, professional practice in teacher education. Doc, Doc, can I come in? Let, can let I come land. in again? Let me learn. We are teaching okay. professional, with what we call PMP. Right, and if you are if yes. in the uh, course outline or in the references, there is no, let's say, teaching standard as a reference material, and you add it, or you go to the class and you mention it. You are you saying teachers are going to, or the university is going to penalize you for doing that? No, no. That that is not the angle I'm coming but, from. But, uh, we, I want to know. Which angle you are uh, uh, Brian. Brain, brain. Let me before that. Let me let me ask. Uh, let me ask Doc something from what he is saying. Okay. Doc, you said that in your submission you you were you were making reference that the teachers should teach the standard, right? Yes. Here is the here is the case. Yes. Here is the case. If I teach the standard, I further, I'm teaching visual arts, and I have my course outline that, as we said, examination oriented. That's who I'm supposed to cover. So if I teach the standard, where, which of the period, what time will I get to teach the standard? And am I going to teach the, tell the student that this is what is coming in the examination or as part of the examination no. question? Because the student, we are teaching. He, he hello, hello, hello. Oh, yeah. Before you come in, I'm hello. Yeah. Hello, Swansea, before coming, you land, please, 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 let me come in. OK, come in. Hello. Please, let me land. We are, we, we are, please, I'm, I'm, let me land, uh, please. Uh, we are adults. Go on. Yes, we are we are adults, and we know the benefits of this standard trust. But to the SS student, to the teacher trainee who is going to write final examination, you are teaching him or her this standard, of which he knows that it's not coming in examination, or no question will be set on the standard in examination. How serious do you think this student is going to take this standard? Hello. Swansea, so before Olele comes in, you don't teach because students should pass exams. This is relating to the profession. And so if it is a topic, you can even give it assignments, read on it and bring it and come in. Let's share with it. Let us not put all our hopes on examination, examination, examination. Examination takes different that is, how our, that, is how our, that is how our curriculum is. That is how our curriculum is designed. 
No, no, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, hello. Can I come in? Can I come? In? Can I come? This only. Yeah, yeah. I'm hello. Here. This only. Okay. okay thank you very much, Swansea and uh, Brain. Yeah, I'm online. Hello. Can you hear me now? We can we hear you, sir. You talk. Thank you very much. Swansea and uh, Brain, you have made a very beautiful submission. But you see, personally, I have, uh, for Swansea, personally, I have been teaching the standards every day that I go to class. And how do I teach the standards? Everything that is uh, presented, everything that is presented by me in my PowerPoint, I have to show clearly where I pick it from in the standards. So where, as I'm teaching, I am grooming the, uh, the, the learners or training them to learn how to go and teach, also to implicate me in the class. So as I'm teaching, I'll tell you that I pick it from NT, NTS, maybe this direction. That's how the standards have been taught. And that's how, uh, sorry, teacher and no, others no, 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 no. want us to teach the standards. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Honorable members, let me. Doctor, oh, no, 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 no. we are talking about teaching you the class. Let, let them finish. Yes, teaching, teaching, the class, right? teaching the class, yeah. teaching the class, in, teaching the class. In, that's what we are. Class, hello, I'm, I'm coming. You are, you are, hello, you are hello, leading a curriculum of which you are. Oh. Let's suppose let you are teaching one after the other. Hello, one at yeah, a time. Good. Let me call you so that you can speak your mind. Good. Okay. We are okay, discussing God. the teaching standard. We are not talking mm -hmm. about. What is your supposed? To, I'm saying that as teacher train, uh, trainers, we are supposed to teach the standard. Teaching the standard means you make the standard a whole course. You are going to add a new course. No. As he said, you can teach it as along. And even the way you even teach, you even be, you should teach the, the standard itself. How you teach it should be the standard itself. And then you're making reference, okay, read this, read that. That's it. Dr. Shani, hello. Yes, I'm. I'm Brain, please, I'm listening. All right. So, like you said, you have to teach the standards as a course. This is the case on the timetable. You're giving me one hour, just one hour to deliver. Where and how am I going to do this? Let's look at that. Oh, but, well. but Brian, yes. But, but I thought that thing has, has been changed for now. Change now, which one is no more one hour? It is still one hour and then it, it, so if you have one okay, hour, they want to talk to them. Honorable members, this one, let us not wash our distance there. We can this thing we can talk about it. Now let's look at the standards. We are not talking about timetable allocated. Please let, let's focus on the standards. I understand but when we can talk about this. All right? You can call we talk about this. All right? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm listening. Okay, so let's no, go on. Any other question yeah. relating to the standards? Any submission? Yeah, hello. Yeah, relating to the standards. Relating to the standards. No, can I come in? Please, you are welcome. Thank you. Based on the standards and professional practice, as you explained clearly to us, I don't understand why when they were developing the, how do you call it, uh, the native uh, visual arts curriculum, which have the individual subject in it. Most of the people at the Department of Art Education were not consulted. Thank you. Uh, that one is you know, held. I think we'll do a different webinar to address that one. Uh, but for now, let's talk about the standard. The standard is regulating teacher performance and practices and professional conduct, right? It is different from you know, developing curriculum. That one is a different thing. And that one is done by a different institution, NACA. And so let's focus on, on the, what is on the board, on the menu right now, please. I, 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 dog, I am uh, not, I'm not talking. Uh, suggesting, suggesting, dog, please. I don't know. Hello, dog, I want to make suggestions. I don't know how this is going to be done. I don't, you don't know how what Hello, is dog. going to be done? I'm saying I, I'm, I'm, I'm making a suggestion and I'm asking, I don't know how this is going to be done. No, you, we'll what I mean down, is that please. once we, especially, yes, once some of us, uh, those of us at the colleges of education, we are teaching teachers who are in turn going to teach, and they are going to strictly, if not strictly, they are going to be um, more 
abide by this standard. So if it can be, if this standard can be incorporated into the curriculum at the colleges of education, I don't know whether it is you, you whether the, uh, the universities have incorporated them in their in their curriculum. I think that will that that will be the best. So that before the student come out as a teacher, he know this standard that he's going to follow. Yeah, Professor Swazi. This standard is for teachers. Professor Swazi. Yes. It has already been fused yes. in the uh, curriculum. The standard is already there. Yes. Do we, I'm, I'm coming, please. Do we teach this standard in, in your visual arts curriculum or any English curriculum or education curriculum in your colleges, the new curriculum or whatever? Is this there? Okay. To my, to my college, I'll say yes. Is there? You are you are using a different curriculum. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh. No, I'm not using a different curriculum. Doctor because, because 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 hello, we teach with the standards. Without the standards, yeah. now you can you cannot teach at the colleges of education. Because everything that we teach there is based on the standards. Is it you are you using professional okay. practice? The standard the standard is the standard is serving you as a guide, you the teacher. Hello, Do you understand what I mean? That's not, if, if you talk about reflective Hello, teaching, man. it is you, the teacher, who after the teaching, you are going to reflect on your teaching. You understand what I mean? What about the students? Hello, Swansi. Hello, Swansi. Yes, dog. Ah, OK, thank you for yes, your concern. You see, the standard can just be one of the topics you are going to treat. And you don't say it is not. When, when you look okay. at a, a course, a course has a co course objective and then course content. It can be one of the course content, not necessarily that okay. because it's not in the course content. So you don't develop a whole course that this course is teaching uh, for national uh, teaching stand. No, it's just a topic, one topic that you treat and then you refer to them to read. In fact, it's a very you know manageable document, not many pages that they can read, right? I they know. can read and, yes, and, and assimilate. So let us not do argument as to why we are going to teach this. At an appropriate time, I'm going to have a meeting with all College of Education artists on a webinar. We discuss things about ourselves as a professional you know, body. And in my capacity as, as a national president, we're going to do that. And then we see how we can just move ahead. Brain, do you have a question or comment from us? OK, so my comment is, whilst we are looking for ways in making students see the need in the standards, standard. we can channel it in this way. That is how I am thinking anyway. When teachers are doing their PDCs, that time is a follow time for the students in most of the colleges. For example, in my college, every Monday, seven to nine, it's meant for professional development session for teachers. So at this point, within the period, one, as an art teacher, I can't permit myself from the teacher's forum, meet my students, and then I give them this information. I think it will help. That is the thought that, that has come to mind anyway. Okay, I think it's a helpful one. Uh, I think it will help your colleagues. Yes, any other? Uh, uh, As we are dog. Into a close. Dog. Yeah. Uh, hello, dog. Yes. Uh, hello, dog. Uh, please, I want to find out from uh, Dr. Brain that in that sense, is you not going to be part of the professional development for that one hour? Because that professional development is also to help me to become what, a professor in this area. So he was not going to be part of the professional development as he's going to meet oh. the student. Smala. Yes, if please. I am not facilitating, if I am not facilitating, I think I can permit myself but, to the largest extent. Hello, I hello. Have, uh, I have most of the hold, knowledge. Hold and listen to him, please. Is Brain, I listening? Brain, go ahead. Right. So what I'm saying is, it is not going to be a religious thing that you have to do every Monday. In a semester, when you are meeting about 12 times in a semester, at least you can schedule 
two of the sessions for this student and it will help. That is a thought I will give him. No, it's a very be be beautiful one. But what I'm trying to say here is that you said, uh, when you began, you said you have uh, enough of the knowledge uh, for that professional development. That's why you need to help your colleagues to also get to your level. Because at that professional development, we do purely activity-based and discussion. So it's not about facilitating. Okay, please, we can go on. Thank you. You, you cannot rule out the students. Hello? You cannot rule out the student yeah. in this regard. Uh -huh. you are here. So, by Thank the you. way, I just said it's a thought. It's a thought. So... Okay, so thank you so much for your wonderful involvement submission in making this webinar successful. Uh, please, any other question for, for us to bring it to a close? Any other questions, suggestions? I'm happy uh, we have the College of Education teachers and those in senior high schools here. We are all developing. You no. Know, you know, we should, if we meet like this and then we talk, we, you know, discuss with each other, get a lot of tabs to help ourselves. Any other, any other question? Okay. I'm about to have any questions. Mine is not a question. Okay. Any submission? Okay, Doc. Can I come in here? Yeah, please come in. Thank you very much. Uh, I think th this webinar has been one of the best because looking at the NTS, it has become a Bible for us teachers nowadays. And without the NTS, uh, uh, although we were, do we, were, we were practicing it, whatever it was in the N NTS, but the NTS has now made it solid for us to know our, uh, where to go and where to come. Because as Swansea was making the submission, he said that even if you want to do, uh, uh, how to call it, uh, a lot of fabrication, you can also base on this same NTS and make a lot of fabrication. But right now, uh, the art teachers are switching. How best we can day in and day out give them training on this NTS so that it will help facilitate our teachings. It will help back out all the creative approaches in the NTS so that when we are teaching as art teachers, people can say, yes, this is really an art teacher. Because if you look at even the new curriculum that we have developed, everything that, that the new curriculum is centered on is art. Now the center of the new curriculum has become art. But uh, before we can make the center very strong, before we can cement that center, then we need to know our national teaching standard. So, dog, I will plead with the art teachers association, that's attack, that from time and time on, we should keep on giving in service training to our members on the NTS so that it will be a guide to their teaching. So that anywhere that they stand, they will see that, yes, they are coming from this particular association. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, doc, 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 let me let me ask this question or let me make this submission. Welcome. Uh, I don't know how many teachers in Ghana. Hello, doc. I'm listening, sir. When we are listening. Hello, doc. Please, we are listening to you. Good. Good. Uh, I, yes, sir. Please. I don't know how many teachers in Ghana have access to this. Uh, teaching standard, as Olele is saying, that it has become something that every teacher is using. I, I think it is either, either in a training college or at the SS level. What about those at the primary school, the basic level? Are they also uh, familiar with this? Uh, they have, they have and how, e how effective... Uh, oh, okay. They have and how it. effective they have it. it's are they online. It? They can, can, they, it. can they be a team? Can they be... Okay. They, they have okay. it. It's online. Please and how download. effective are they using it? No, effectiveness, <laughs> that's how we are teaching it, so that we all you know, learn from it, how we're going to make it effective. And that is why in our next okay. week webinar, uh, the main presenter, Dr. Patrick de Graaf Yangshin, is going to deal with the practicalities, where he's going to give us the examples of using this. So if it, if it says it should be a reflective practice, what, what exactly does it mean? Or what Oh, exactly. Okay. Doing. So that's 
So um, I'm uh, entreating okay. all of you to join us, God willing, next week as we continue with the, I will continue digesting the national teaching standards. And in this three month webinar, we, we continue. We start every Tuesday and Thursday and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, on this note, uh, okay. in the absence of questions, suggestions, and opinion, I thank you all for joining. Dog, 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 dog. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah, before you close us, let me send a, a particular or a special thanks to all the colleagues of education members and even the various members who are who joined this webinar. Thank you very much because for the colleagues of education members, they had it within a short time just this morning that I kept it on their platform, but they were able to what, make it. Thank you once again. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? I can see Bray wanted to say something. No. Okay. It's okay. 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 So thank you all once again. And may God bless us all. All right. Bye.